Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. As we start, can you talk a little bit about your current role and also your career trajectory? How did you get into cybersecurity? I'm a senior leader at F10 FinTech and how I got into this was I really started in IT and cyber and wanted to find ways to help enable the business. As I grew from a help desk analyst to where I am in my career, I always looked for ways to help the business with their digital transformation, with their projects, with whatever they were looking to do, but to do so in a clear and safe way. So I often worked as the translator between them and more technical engineers that were looking to develop projects. And I would work to understand what the business requirements were, and then also understand where potentially any of the technical limitations were and help be that translator. I understand. If, if there's a handful of things I learned about cybersecurity myself is that one, it's a team sport and it's, all, and it's valuable for practitioners to connect and to share what they learned, both about some of the threat landscape and the toolbox. I think it's always evolving. And the other thing that I learned, it's always changing. So what's top of mind today will change in the next three, six months. Some of the bugs will be patched up, but new vulnerabilities will resurface. From, from that perspective and given your background, your experience, what are the top three biggest challenges facing cybersecurity practitioners today, in your view? Uh, so the first one is, I would say, the evolution of as a service and no-code platforms. As the businesses are able to develop solutions on their own, they might often skip their engagement with security and therefore... Uh, in inadvertently introduce risk to the environment simply because they were trying to develop at a faster rate than security might allow. So that that would be the first one. The second one is really threat actors taking advantage of automation and scale, just like businesses are. So if organizations are slow to patch and slow to recover, they risk having themselves being a target for those threat actors. I understand. I understand. It's, I think this moving to the cloud is a secular trend, which if anything was accelerated by COVID when everyone was working from home, but I think it's definitely not slowing down. And, and some of the more recent tools, whether it's Copilot, whether it's other maybe ChatGPT enabled solutions that essentially have the promise of turning any developer in a 10X developer. So it's, if anything, the cost of creating applications, writing code is really quickly approaching zero, which if anything will probably lead to proliferation solutions, applications, with various degrees of security baked into them, what do you think some of the best practices would be, in, whether it's now or in the future, of how to make sure that security is not just a thin layer of peanut butter spread, spread in the sandwich, but it's really part of the recipe and part of the building blocks that pe people use. That it's, it's an integral part, but not just something you spread over, something that's already baked in. I think, like you mentioned, security needs to be a team player and be involved with the business. So not just something that comes as a checkbox at the end, something that they integrate throughout their process, have security involved at the ideation phase, have security involved in the testing phase, and then also validation at the end. But I think as businesses look to evolve and use solutions like enabled AI solutions, they should work with their businesses so that they understand the risks that, that come with that. It's, I think it's a very good point. And I think overall, as cybersecurity has exploded and claiming a bigger and bigger piece of my mind, but along throughout the organization, from the board of directors to C-level executives, and throughout our organization, I think there was just a lot more, maybe it's because it's in the news, you see a lot more publications highlighting the fact that this organization was breached, personal information of that many clients was, was exposed, kind of financial implications, there's blow-ups in, in crypto world when 
the protocol was not properly designed and all the funds were drained to the tune of several million dollars. I think it's more kind of top of mind in the general population more so than before where it was really more relegated to practitioners. And I think as a result of that, just more awareness from the general population and because I think technology is just, it's taking bigger and bigger place in everyone's life, both on a personal level, at the organization level, whether it's a corporation, government entity, it just, we're a lot more dependent and we're a lot more relying on technology, not failing. And as a result, I guess the attack surface expands and the attackers, the, as someone said, we need to be right all the time and they need to be right only once. I think as a result, a lot more people are looking into the space to make a career, whether they're maybe in IT, as you mentioned, looking to transition into cybersecurity, or maybe even more upstream, more junior, maybe someone who's going to college is trying to figure out where, what field to pick to, to make a career out of it. What would be your recommendation from your experience, from your vantage point on someone who is either considering or just starting on their career path? What are some of the two or three things in your view they should focus on? First, I would say awareness of the total space. Uh, oftentimes there's discussions of career paths in, in cybersecurity focused really on pen testing and SOC analysts, but there's a variety of different roles. And now with things like AI enabled tools, ha having an understanding as to how those things function and then what you can do to help secure the process along the way helps you to show that security is valued throughout the value chain. So you could be a data scientist that's focused on security. You could be a programmer that's focused on security. You can be in GRC and compliance with a focus on not just security, but how to do so in a business enabling way. So there's so many different ways here in the US, The NIST created the NICE work development framework that lists out over 52 different roles for IT and security. That gives you a great framework to look at and to evaluate the fields so you could do research. And then from there, I would say a lot of informational interviews with individuals in the different fields to make sure it's something that you're really interested in. Oftentimes people come just for the money and end up burnt out at the end because the role that they chose was against what their nature was. Maybe it was producing reports and they hate reports. Maybe it was going through audit logs and they don't like that. So really figure out what you like and what you don't like as you do that self-discovery through the different roles. It makes a lot of sense because I think if you're not truly passionate about the field, you will burn out and you will churn out because it's only, you need to be infinitely curious because it's an ever evolving field, but also you want to care enough and you want to like it to stick with us because it certainly can be stressful. It certainly can be overwhelming. So if you don't have the passion, it's unlikely there will be a sustainable career path. But to your point, there are so many different facets. There's so many different aspects to cybersecurity. It's not just pen testing. And some of the fields like GRC, they're in, a lot less technical than some of the other some of the other aspects of cybersecurity. But I want to double click a little bit on, on some something that you mentioned, which is cybersecurity professionals, they need to think of themselves, they need to align themselves more with the business goals. So it's not just you're not in a silo. You're going to view yourself as an enabler. And it's something that we hear very often. And one of the themes, one of the punchlines that I heard, which I thought was pretty interesting, that before cybersecurity team was seen as a department of no, meaning that's where all the projects go to die because it just we cannot do it in a secure way, which I think is probably like ring was ringing true like a few years ago, but I think now people are realizing it's not a sustainable way. You cannot be an obstacle on the way of business growth, especially with the way with the challenge with the challenging environment that the business are, businesses are facing. And with ever-changing technological and spaces, it's not an option. There are competitive pressures, regulatory pressures. And it seems that being an enabler, being in cybersecurity and being an enabler of business obviously requires technical background, but also it requires almost a shift in the mindset of, and I'm wondering, again, based on your experience, what are some of the thoughts 
and some of the suggestions that you have of people realizing that they need to be not just technically sophisticated, but also they need to wear the business hat in addition to keeping the organization secure. What are some of your some of the advice you could give to those who are just realizing they need to grow another skill set in being the business enabler and not just making sure that the organization is safe? Yeah, as you go through working with the different business units on their projects, ask them the why behind what you're trying to accomplish. And once you better understand the why, then you can start to look at the how and the how you can do it securely and how you can enable them. And then you can focus on what you're trying to deliver. Oftentimes, you have an idea as to what they were looking to do, but they have a totally different idea. So ensure that you work with them through that process. And then rather than saying no, you can allow them to make a risk-informed decision. Now you're talking their language. You're going, okay, so you want to do this for this reason, and this is what you're hoping to accomplish, but these are the risks involved with your current approach. These are some of the things that you can do to mitigate the risk. And potentially in the end, this is some of the risk that you'll still have to own or that you'll have to accept, transfer, however you're looking to disposition the risk. But now you're talking their language so that they can make a risk-informed decision on their project, on their goals that you're doing. And they're the ones making the decision because ultimately they're the ones owning the risk. You're just helping them imply or implement standards that the organization has set or follow best practices based on the community that they have shown over time. They're the ones owning the risk in the end, not you. Makes sense. So essentially, you're more of a guide helping them to get safely to their destination point. You're not the guard slapping them on the hand whenever they try to veer off track. And it's just, I, I guess, to your point, it's, it just takes a little bit of a different mindset and aligning goals will probably go a long way. Switching gears a little bit, we talked about how technology in general and cybersecurity in particular is an ever-evolving, ever-changing field. And it appears that the pace of change is accelerating. Just looking at the adoption curve of the internet and then the mobile and now ChatGPT, it seems like there's a new upgrade every 48 hours, it seems like, with applications that just completely beyond belief what's possible. And I think it's very rapidly evolving topic and evolving application with very far-reaching implications for the business, for cybersecurity. With this, and not just focusing on that particular technology, but in general, in your view, what would be everyone, what do you think everyone is going to be talking about as far as cybersecurity, whether it's threat landscape or what would be top of mind, top three challenges that CISOs, VP, director level, cybersecurity executives will be talking about six months from now, 12 months from now, you think? Well, I can't predict the future, but I think one of the things that we should be talking about is not just the threat landscape and what's happening outside, but also be talking about how that impacts the organization and what we could do to mitigate it. Instead of just providing them with, here are all the bad things, you should provide them with the guide on what they can do to protect themselves as well. I understand. I understand. I, I noticed, am I correct in, say, in, in saying the, the name of the, the podcast that you, is it Breaking Into Cybersecurity? Is that the name of the... Yeah, it started as Breaking Into Cybersecurity, and then later we launched Breaking Into Cybersecurity Leadership for leaders to help prepare the next generation of cybersecurity leaders. I'm curious about, but it's, it seems like it's a very popular and successful venture. What have you learned? What are the top takeaways, I guess, both for probably more so on the leadership side? What, especially, the reason I'm asking is that we obviously work a lot with cybersecurity executives. I think recently, Given current economic environment, a lot of organizations found themselves facing fairly serious headwinds. A lot of companies going through a period of rapid, drastic transformation. A lot of roles are being reassigned, which comes with stress, challenges, a lot of opportunities, but it's certainly not smooth sailing for a lot of executives. From 
your from experience of breaking in cybersecurity, what have you learned that you think, what kind of advice you think would help executives who found themselves in this turbulent times? What should they focus on both on the personal level as far as their career is concerned and also on the organization level as well? I'd say that relates to both. It starts with the ability to collaborate with the business. Security isn't a silo. Security is a function that that is within the business. Without the business, there is no need for security. So if the if you can't enable the business to generate whatever it does to produce value, there's no va- there, there's nothing for you to protect. There's that first. Then there's the ability to communicate where, what the risks are and then influence the leaders that are making those decisions. I say th- those would be the top three skills that a- any leader would need, both on the personal side as well as the organizational side. It makes a lot of sense. Chris, I know we're coming up on time. What's the best way for for you to connect is it are you on linkedin what's the best way for our listeners to reach out yeah linkedin is the best way to reach out to me also cpf-coaching.com is Mm -hmm. where i help future leaders with their coaching needs to grow their careers excellent absolutely sounds good chris thank you so much for taking your time for this this was very insightful thank you thank you very much